sometimes, people. Don't feel bad about it. What is up, guys? You having a good day? Having a great day myself. You know, rain or shine, gloom or doom, even during January or some days during that month, it is medically advisable to go outside. I think every day is a beautiful day in this city, thanks to all of our lovely architecture. I can keep going on and on about how I think in all these great buildings all day long. I have not pointed one out yet, though, so let's begin. Most of the stuff I'll talk about today is going to be on actual style on that building. It's called French Bows Arts. A French Bows art style building has three things on it. It'll have an ornately decorated bottom, a stack of plain flooring, then an ornately decorated top. That is the French Bows art architectural style. Now, the Wrigley Building, of course, was originally built for the Wrigley Chewing Gum Company. And a fun fact and a question for you guys about Wrigley Chewing Gum. Fun fact, they did not originally sell gum. Does anybody know what Wrigley originally sold? And do you yell it out? Any guesses, too? Here, who said soap? It's in the back. The very back. Yeah, two people in the back said soap. Ding, ding, ding. Soap and baking soda, other chemical dry goods like that, like laundry detergent. Those products were not selling well at all. Wrigley, so it's a promotion to start adding two pieces of gum to the pack of soap. People like the taste of the gum sample so much, started buying the pack of soap for the gum sample and just tossing all the soap away. So we're going to get it into a chewing gum company. On the right, let's talk about the second tallest building in Chicago, the one we're docked at. This is the Trump International Hotel and Tavern, designed by Adrian Smith. In 2009, Adrian Smith, let's talk about him. He's a world-famous Chicago local architect. He's world-famous not for designing this building. He is more world-famous for designing the first building. So to put his work another perspective, look at this black architect, this whole less is more philosophy. I am sure one of his students disagreed with the whole Les Moore thing because that guy's name is Bertrand Goldberg. We designed these two buildings right next to us. The Corn Cobs, as they are then all known in Chicago, for all these other reasons. The actual name of the buildings is Marinas Towers, built in 1963 by Bertrand Goldberg in an effort to attract the middle class people. Well, yeah, 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 this was yeah, back in the day. Nobody wanted to live in downtown Chicago. Most people just worked downtown. It's a lot of things like those two buildings, like a city inside of a city. On the inside, there was a roller rink, a grocery store, a doctor's office, a movie theater, a bowling alley, and the accommodations you need or want to live downtown. Now, the most common questions I get about those two buildings. One, what do the apartments look like on the inside? Now there, a slice of pie. Enter the pointy end, goes outward toward the balcony. The other common question I get, has anybody ever driven off the parking lot before? The process heats the water up, magnificently, like the wildlife of the river. We do have wildlife on this river, over 70 different species. in the wind 18 inches in either direction on a windy day a whole foot and a half 
Now, I can't prove this to you, but it takes some work. A new class building called 333 West Racker, designed by Cohn, Parson, and Fox in 1983. Good example of something that architects are called contextualism. That is, in architecture, whenever you design a building in the context of its surroundings, some Greek pediments. Here is up, stealing glass, that's the modern side. At the very top, looks like the Parthenon in Greece, right? That is postmodernism for you, and just an example of how beautiful a building can actually be in Chicago. Then right next to it, we have 55 West Wacker, which is an example of McDonald's. And a few of them, the Meow Meow Mix theme song, you know the one, Meow 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 Meow. I'll do the whole thing, don't worry. Yeah, we're doing the blame for that, they are running advertising. On the right. You're gonna see a brick building with a big sign says Morton's the state for carrot gold leaf is the clock tower of the carbide and carbon building. That's real gold up there. And unfortunately, that one makes a liar out of a lot of tour guides. They love to tell this story. The story's not true. Now, what is true is built by the Burnham Brothers in 1920. Right next to us, we have an older looking limestone clad building called called the London Guarantee and Accident Building, designed by Alfred Alshuler in 1922. Same architectural style on Wrigley. French Beaux Arts, ornate bottoms, stacked plain floors, ornate top. Talking about the ornate palace and hood won that contest with their neo-gothic design. Neo-gothic, that is the modern architecture of the day and age, the 1920s, with the Art Deco style sweeping vertical. And it's also gone by the $80 million mistake. And if you can't, if you're having a hard time picturing it, picture a large white rectangle with black lines going up it. Now, the reason it's called the $80 million mistake is, as you know, it does get rough. February of 2019, and for several days that month, we were colder than the surface of Mars. Negative 66 with a wind chill. Putting that in perspective, that is over 130 degrees less than it is today. Chicago local architect Jeannie Gang. Whenever that building was first built, it was considered the most beautiful residential tower in the world. Also, has anybody here seen the first episode of Ozark, the Netflix show? If you've seen that first episode, I bet you remember something very shocking happening to somebody on a balcony in the very beginning. One of those balconies, fun fact. Also, whenever that building was first built, it was the tallest building in the world designed by a lead female architect. Tallest building in the world designed by a woman. It is no longer the tallest building in the world designed by a lead female architect. I know it's a bummer. Just kidding, folks. It's not a bummer, because Jeannie Gang went wild in 2021 and broke her own record with this wavy blue building on the right. Yes, this is also by Jeannie Gang. It's called the St. Regis. It's 1,198 feet tall. It's the third tallest building in Chicago now. And now it's the tallest building in the world designed by a lead female architect. It's a luxury apartment and hotel, so folks... Get excited if you're looking for a penthouse apartment to rent in Chicago. The top floor penthouse, you can't see it right now, but it's currently for rent. So right now, we're going to play a little bit of a game. I'm going to give you guys a few details on this apartment, and I want you to yell out a few guesses as to what the monthly rent is. So it's what you pay 12 times a year. It is a four-bedroom, four-bathroom apartment with 6,600 square feet. And here's the real kicker detail. It's the tallest residence in Chicago. It is the highest point you can live in this city. Yell out a few guesses as to what the monthly rent is. I will give you a hint. It is less than $100,000 a month. 90000 40000 70,000. Who said 40,000? You guys win the apartment. Congratulations. It's $37,000 a month. Y'all got the closest. Yeah, 37,000. You don't win the apartment. I have no power there. Uh, but it's four bedrooms and four bathrooms. It's a big space. If you're there alone, get a cat or a roommate or something. Keep you company. Get a few roommates. Get to split up that rent. And now I'm going to sit down. That's because I am not going to talk about what's around us. I'm going to talk about what is underneath us. The Chicago River. Water's always going to go where gravity takes it. Since that river was lower than ours, if we connected the two, our water would fall into the dense plains, reverse the flow of our river permanently. The canal project was massive. More dirt was moved in that canal than the Panama Canal, but it was finished on January 2nd of 1900, when it was the final day. Yesterday it was like 90 to 95 degrees. Now it's only about 70 degrees today, and all that humidity and stuff is kind of culminating in this fog, so that's what's going on. But if you have any questions while I'm off the mic, feel free to come up and ask. I'll get back at the mic as we're turned around, and I'll start talking about Navy Pier. random aside i do not feel i feel very sorry for the tour guide that has to be on the lake today i'm on the river the whole day though nice now as we're turning here it's very strange because you can stop seeing the skyline just like number three is wrigley field you might have been there over the last couple of days because of all the cubs damn been going on but also number one the most visited tourist attraction so i'm going to recommend go to the art institute of chicago one of the best things this city has to offer then what's the really famous thing in that park raise your hand if you know the two words the bean 
Also, who here went to the bean and got disappointed by the beats that people called the bean? I'm so sorry, Nish Kapoor. Make Cloudgate look like a giant pro play the jump fidget spinner with three lobes. That is called a three lobe construction style. And what that does for the building is it makes it incredibly resistant against the wind. That building doesn't sway in the wind, it doesn't twist in the wind. The Hancock building actually twists in the wind. That building does nothing in the wind. It is so aerodynamically shaped, the wind just wraps around the building and wraps around it. You'll see two buildings that are connected at the bottom here with red brick and green steel. The first one there's name is Riverview 1. The next one past its name is Riverview 2. Designed by James DeStefano in 2000. We've seen that out right now. Originally paid $24 million for raw space. That is concrete walls, concrete floor, concrete ceiling. For 8.4 million of that older piece, the die look like. There's two dyes. One is a liquid, one is a powder. Liquid is a bright yellow color. Completely harmless to the wildlife. The extra ingredient to the dye is called Google it. But that's another thing in Chicago we're really proud of. Right, ding, ding. Rest in peace, Jerry. Now right next to us, you have a shorter building with a green glass side to it. That's the University of Chicago's Bleacher Center, designed by Dirk Lohan. Dirk Lohan caught some controversy for this building for what he did to the classrooms. We're passing the classrooms right now with the jutting out wedges of the wall. Now I would say, hey, take a peek inside. Now that we're pulling up here, I get to share with you guys my favorite fun fact about a building in Chicago. It's kind of like an Easter egg, a little secret. It's the clock tower of Wrigley. Look at the numbers on that clock. Or chug it, can't bring it off. Once again, we're the first person off the boat. I'll be at the bottom of the ramp. Thank you guys. This really is one of my favorite things to do. Talking about Chicago. Thanks for listening. You're a great audience. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your